This acute heart failure is the one which can trouble you in the perioperative period. It actually refers to rapid onset or worsening of signs and symptoms of heart failure. It is a life threatening medical emergency. You have to admit the patient in the hospital in an urgent basis. It may present as the first time, first occurrence or more frequently as a consequence of decompensation of chronic heart failure and it might be caused by a primary cardiac function or precipitated by extrinsic factor. This is what very very important in the perioperative period, precipitation by eccentric factor. When you give anesthesia, there are many factors which can aggravate the heart failure and lead to acute heart failure. So, you should avoid those precipitating factors in the perioperative period. And the two most important variable, I will say three most important variable. One is preload. Your volume management can aggravate the heart failure. Another one is your systemic vascular resistance, your afterload and the third one is going to be contractility. All this can play a major role in the perioperative period precipitating heart failure. So, your volume management has to be accurate, your afterload reduction should be good and the contractility should not be deteriorated further. And if these three things is not managed properly, your fluid is going to going to the alveoli and the patient will have acute pulmonary edema. Another important terminology in heart failure is whether the patient is compensated or decompensated. Usually when a stress is placed on the heart, for example in hypertension, a chronic stress on the heart, the heart undergoes left ventricular hypertrophy and compensates the necessary cardiac output. But if the stress continues to happen, for example, your blood pressure is not controlled or your blood pressure is high or you add a tachycardia or some other insult to the heart and this stress is invariably happening, the heart decompensates. Here you can see the heart is dilated and enlarged and it is decompensated. This leads to drastic fall in cardiac output. So, there is going to be heart failure. This can lead to two things. There can be a chamber dilatation, atrial or ventricular distension or both chamber can be distended or the forward flow is reduced which leads to impairment in renal perfusion. When there is low cardiac output, hypotension, your renin angiotensin aldosterone axis is activated and due to distension, atrial natriuretic peptide release happens. This reduces the sodium, renin angiotensin increases the sodium. So, both way it happens. So, how you differentiate compensated with decompensated heart failure? In compensated, the renal impairment is mild to moderate and the urine sodium potassium ratio is greater than 1. Here, in decompensated, it is moderate to severe reduction in renal perfusion and the urine sodium potassium is less than 1. Another important differentiation is between left and right heart failure. Always remember left ventricular failure, you have plenty of options to treat. You can use inotrope, you can go for mechanical support and plenty of manuals are there to treat the left ventricle. But right ventricle is the one which is affected by most of the anesthesia maneuver. For example, your positive pressure ventilation. Always remember, right ventricle cannot tolerate pressure overload. So, any maneuver which you do, passive pressure ventilation or volume giving, affects the right ventricle more than the left ventricle. And another important thing is the treatment option is very minimal and it is very difficult to treat right ventricular failure than the left ventricular failure. Here, right ventricular failure, there is going to be conjunction of the peripheral tissues. In left heart failure, there are two things, okay. Your cardiac output is decreased. So, all the systemic perfusion is affected and the pulmonary congestion can happen. With congestion of the peripheral tissue, there can be 
dependent edema and ascites, your liver congestion or gastrointestinal tract congestion. This leads to anorexia, GI distress and weight loss. Liver congestion can lead to impaired liver function. There might be a transient elevation of liver enzymes or it can be a congestive hepatomegaly. With decreased cardiac output, there is going to be decreased tissue perfusion throughout the body. Your kidney can be affected, your liver can be affected, your brain can be affected. With pulmonary congestion, there is going to be impaired gas exchange and patient will develop pulmonary edema and there can be cyanosis and signs of hypoxia. In pulmonary edema, you have orthopnea, cough with frothy sputum and PND will develop. These are the various signs and symptoms of right and left heart failure.